It's time for your favorite video game podcast. Dude, stop peeking at the screen. Screen peeking! <laughs> That's <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Mario's and Princess Peach's. I'm sure we've done it before. It's super basic, sure we've but we're still doing it, it because it's episode 32 of your favorite video game podcast. This is Screen Pakers. What's up, everybody? I am what up? Tony Revis here with my best friend, Dane Rankin, and we D-Rank. can't think of names D-Rank. all the time. But no, Dane, we're not that creative. We're not that creative. How you doing? Leave us alone, people. And we try to, we try good, to make man. it, you know, we try to make it tied into stories. There's not a lot of like specific games in the stories today. No. So, so we're just so going we're just going classic. In general here. We're going exactly. classic. But Dane, how's it hanging? Dude, How you it's doing? Hanging. It's hanging hard, man. Doing nice. good. Nice. Doing nice. good, dude. What right about on, you? Uh, I'm great. Um, as you can see, folks, I am wearing the dad hat. The peak oh, dad hat. My dad hat. So you can, you know, it's it's finally available. I had to make sure that yeah, it was dude. it was good before. You yeah, can see it, was, it. it had to be up like to peak quality, you know. Yeah, definitely. Um, I have the white hat. There's going to be other colors. There's going to be like black. You Ooh. can get a black one. Um, I think you can get a gray one. But I think you can get a gray one. But check the peak store, peakstore.bigcartel.com, and get yourself mm. a peak hat and all the peak other merch, mm. like this peak shirt and everything. Anyways, we got time for plugs later. But we're here peeking with y'all. Thank you so much Hell for joining yeah, yeah, yeah. us for another episode of Screen Peekers. This is 32. This Damn, is this dude. is this is Shaq in Orlando episode. That's what this Whew. is. Um, man, right. there's a lot. <laughs> what a there's, poll. What a poll that was, man. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot to talk about this week. A lot of uh interesting news coming from the big three. Yeah. Um, yeah. Not and like I said, not a lot of specific game uh, news today, except for um, no, but like the last thing some, when some, some foundational news that could set up the future of games, yeah, it's going to be very it's, it's interesting. interesting. It's going to be very interesting to talk about um, a lot of the news that doesn't have a lot of um, impact on in the short term, but could have huge no. impact in the long term. So I'm yeah. going to be excited yeah. to talk about that. Um, so this is kind of a futuristic episode. We're, we're talking years down the road mm-hmm. today, mm-hmm. Um, but it's going to be a lot of fun. So thank you guys for joining us. If you're watching us right here at youtube.com backslash screen peekers, what up? We love you. Don't we look good on camera? I feel great Hell today. Yeah. I, I have a good outfit on. I, I'm looking good. Um, I'm sure Dane's looking I'm, good too. He's always looking good. I'm scrubbing it per usual, dude. You know that. But you always look good, dog. Always. <laughs> Thanks, dog. Uh, <laughs> well kept. Uh, I do my best. Uh, make my sure best. you guys hit that subscribe button so you're staying tuned with all the fun stuff that comes here at youtube.com backslash screen peekers like yesterday's episode of Halo Reach. We're shooting each other mm. in the face and it's fun. Mm. Uh, it's what? Tomorrow. God, it's fun. Ooh. Tomorrow, the finale of Super Mario Party. Um, and then next week. On Wednesday, the very first episode of a fun little talk show that my main man Dane Rankin hosts called Peak and Chill, where we're just going to yeah. chill out and, and and talk about different game topics. Episode one next week on Wednesday the 13th. So, you know, mm-hmm. set the mood right for Valentine's Day by watching some Peak and Chill. You know what I'm saying? Um Episode one, we're talking video game protagonists, bests, worsts, mm. what makes a good protagonist, what makes a bad protagonist. Just chilling. Fun, fun me, topic. Fun me, topic. Dane Rankin, the host with with Tone Dog there and JB and Big Juicy just having Big a good juice. old time. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. More content coming your way. Um and if you're listening to this podcast on the road, you know, you're in your car, on iTunes, Google Play, or whatever, we love you as well. Make sure you uh, rate and review and uh, all that good stuff. Um, now, Dane, mm. before mm. we dive into the news, mm. there's something that we need to talk about. Um, we alluded to it last week. I went on a very fun trip last week, and the cat's out of the bag now. I got to the honor 
and the privilege to go to Kind of Funny last week. It was you did. quite an experience to go hang you out with those did, dudes. Um, yes, I'm very, very lucky. You know, I wasn't there because of me. I was there because of Jeff. Um, but I got to tag along. You were along. there nonetheless, though, which is awesome. I was there nonetheless. I got to hang out with 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 Greggy and and uh, Nick until he transformed into Johnny Ace. Um, got to hang out with Tim Gettys. Boy, does he transform well. Yeah, I got to hang out with the boy Tim Geddes, who was who's the man, and we talked about uh, Piranha Plant because I hadn't, I hadn't got to play with him yet. So I was like, "Hey, how's Piranha Plant?" Most. And he and he gave me the skinny. He's like, "Yeah, he's all right. He's he's very vertical. He doesn't have range." And and he kind of you know explained it. So shout out to uh, kind of funny. They're awesome. I had a blast there. Now what nice. this brings me to is while I was there, uh, the day before I was there, they had the, another live stream for their fundraising, and they reached a mm. goal called an up-and-comer opportunity goal where they are yep. going to fly out a content creator to be on a week of programming. Really cool thing that they're doing. Yeah. And Super you can cool. submit people that you like, people that you watch or whatever to try to get this opportunity. So us screen peekers are asking you, our beautiful audience, to go to kindoffunny.com backslash up-and-comer. All right. You can find it in the discord as well. We talked about there and go ahead and nominate us. Why not? Give it a shot. Because if we get, you know, selected or something, get to be a kind of funny for a week, do some awesome programming and just bring more eyes to this product, which would help us add cooler stuff, add more content oh, dude, for, for you. Yeah. So if you guys can take a minute, it's really easy to fill out. It's just, you put out, you know, our names, our, our Twitter handles, um, our YouTube channel, and then just a brief explanation of why you like us or why we should be able to do it. Um, I submitted us and, um, the, when I submitted mine, I was like, you know, talking about, you know, whatever, love games, love to podcast, blah, 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 all this stuff. And then like the last thing was like, has been to kind of funny and nobody seemed to hate him. That was yeah. that was that was my last like bullet point. You know, it's like Dude, oh that's yeah, that's a big claim he's, right there. That's he's perfect. already he's already been here and yeah. we, yeah. he was all right. You know, so um, yeah. But uh, you know, we know it's a long shot, and and luckily, uh, I still you know thanks to Jeff and everything, still do have this in there and and uh, that cool exactly. picture There's that a big that, connection that, made. Yeah, and yeah. That, that cool picture Greg took, like kind of showcasing my Screen Peaker sweatshirt um, that I posted on Instagram and stuff. It was just awesome. So, um, but what a cool opportunity that is. Whoever gets it, I'm excited to see who does get it because it's just cool for yeah. them to be able to try to share The fact that, they, and that they do this is really cool. They're not like super pretentious and not open yeah. to, you know, other people and, and – and they, so you know, they had a they had a target awesome. goal and they hit it and they actually had a second one that they didn't hit but they said you know what we're just going to do it anyway so they're actually doing two people for two separate yeah, weeks yeah I saw that yeah so, yeah so that's that's really cool as well so if you guys you know feel so inclined you know kind of funny.com backslash up and comer submit me and Dane hey mm -hmm. who, what you know Dude, what are the thanks. what are the chances yeah, it'd be really cool yep. we'd really what? appreciate it we'd really know. appreciate it so. Um, but let's dive right into this news, guys. There's yeah, some crazy, big things that happened shit. this week. Um, I don't even know what to make of it. Crazy. And it was all, and it was all kind of like leak leaky shit. Like it wasn't stuff that was like like announced like to the public, but it's stuff that like it's not like a smash leak where it's like, ah, oh, is this real? Like it, there's a lot of water. No, to there's this. like some serious traction to this yeah. stuff. You know. So the first thing is something that I think is very very interesting. Microsoft is bringing mm -hmm. Xbox Live to Nintendo Switch, iOS, and Android devices. Mm -hmm. Now, short term... Yeah, when you read that title, though, it's a little misleading. It's a, a little, little misleading. Bit. It seems like, you know, like first thought, you're like, oh, can I download Xbox games on a Switch now? Like, is that what's going to yeah. happen? And no, not the no. case. Yeah. Not the case. Nope. Um now this and again, this is also kind of misleading because this has kind of already happened with any crossplay games. If you're playing Fortnite Ex crossplay, exactly. you're already kind of getting yeah. the Xbox Live crossover there. But what exactly. this does is bring, you know, it's gonna have, you know, the leaderboards, your 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 friends list and all that stuff that mm -hmm. you get on Xbox Live available on mobile kind of devices. So you can you can yeah. you know, do that kind of thing. So it doesn't seem like it's right. anything that major, right? We're not gonna be Yeah, because like when I first heard this, I was like, oh shit, are they adding achievements to Nintendo games? And that no, would have been cool. Definitely not. That's yeah. not I don't what this exactly. And we're not is we're saying. not playing Halo on Switch. Like that's not no. that's not happening. No. But I think this is very interesting to see how this relationship yeah. is continuing continuing to progress. You know, it started yeah, with Yeah, and that's yeah. 
Yeah. It started with the cross play thing when we saw, oh, they're working together in that yeah. capacity. And, you know, maybe there's rumblings of, of stuff down the future, but we're starting to see that progress. Now, Dane, what, what do you, mm-hmm. what do you think about all this? Yeah, I think the biggest news here, while this is, this is definitely newsworthy, but I think the underlying big thing here is just the further partnership that we're seeing between Microsoft and Nintendo. Um, because like right now, like you said, and like the article says, this has already been, this has already sort of been, been happening. Yeah. Um, you know, it doesn't mean that we're going to be playing Xbox games on our switch that we're getting achievements for Nintendo games. Um, this is more of a way for third party developers to kind of have the Xbox live infrastructure and platform available on the switch. Um, this doesn't mean, you know, Microsoft is taking over the Nintendo online, nothing, nothing grandiose like that. Um, but it does seem like it is setting a lot of groundwork for the future and it's just placating more and more into the themes that we have heard both from our inside connection at Microsoft and in the news that Nintendo and Microsoft are finding ways to collaborate and partner up, right? And the 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 interesting thing here is it's making me think, you know, back to E3 when Microsoft came out and said straight up, we are going to be all about the games. And this leads me to think, you know, are they so focused on just games that they want you to be able to play their games on any kind of platform, whether it's your smart TV or a Nintendo Switch? I mean, it sure seems like they're putting in a lot of resources into cloud gaming and their X Cloud and their Azure, um, you know, all that stuff. So it just makes me really, really curious if this is like some kind of foundational groundwork for the future, for being able to play their first party titles on your Nintendo Switch. Um, that's what I find most intriguing about a story like this. It's just more Microsoft and more Nintendo doing things together, which is kind of an unprecedented thing, you know? Yeah. Um, so it's just, it's really, really interesting what this could mean. And also not only what this means for Nintendo, but what this is, what this means for Microsoft and their focus moving forward. That's what I find the most the most interesting here. You know, it would be very, very strange playing a, an Xbox game or a Microsoft Studios game on your Nintendo Switch. I'm not saying that's what this is setting up to do, but it certainly kind of seems like the writing is on the wall in that regard with something, something like this. Right, Because it right. seems like, you know, the biggest part of, of Microsoft Games' business model right now is to play your play their games anywhere at any time on any platform. And I don't think they're fucking around with that, dude. I think I think they they really mean it when they say that's that's what they're going with. And sure. I don't think the Switch is off limits for that to be honest. I really don't. So, man, I don't know. I'm I'm very very curious what this means. Yeah, what definitely. Do you, what do you think? Yeah, and you, you know you're you're right on the right you know you're on the right track. It was exactly right, and I just kind of starting to just imagine the things that that are possible. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Nintendo's kind of like the one gaming company that hasn't thrown their hat into like the streaming ring yet. That like exactly. everyone else seems to be working on it. And Nintendo's kind of just you know hasn't really done anything. So you know maybe they don't need to. Maybe if they do partner up with Microsoft when X Cloud is a thing, maybe we see mm-hmm. Nintendo games on X Cloud, which seems like yeah. a foreign thing. Like yeah. it would never happen. But we seeing these little things start to happen that kind of open the door for that possibility. Yeah, man. That that you know maybe down the and road, maybe instead of like you know we're all yeah. bummed out that there's not this virtual console and there's nothing on the Nintendo Switch online. Well, maybe they'll just throw it on xCloud because they have the mm-hmm. bigger infrastructure for it. You know what I mean? Um, so and that it's would be still, a dream it's still scenario. It's no secret that Nintendo Online, you know, it's it's not the greatest. I don't think that's Nintendo's forte is that sure. realm. And, mm-hmm. you know, maybe they're, they would be okay with having Microsoft handle that kind of part of their business and sharing that space for their games too. I don't know, but... Um, Shit, man, this is really, really interesting. And right, and and another thing, it just it just continues to open God these possibilities, and, and the imagination exactly. can just start to fly. Exactly. That if these companies are working together, what that can mean? Can, Dude, do, it, can it mean? You know, are we going to see Master Chief as a DLC character in Smash? I don't fucking know these days. You know what I mean? Like I, that dude, is something that's so I know. within I know. the realm of possibility in a weird way. Like it's so like I would never place a bet on it in Vegas. I don't care what the odds are. I would never place a bet on it that, uh, you know, 
Master Chief would be in Smash, but hey, fucking the way Dude, this is going, yeah, because you never fucking know. Two, two years ago, both of us would have said absolutely fucking not. That's not a chance. But now, you who knows? Who knows? It's so hard. I mean, this is just. It's just crazy that these dominoes are kind of falling into place because yeah. I'll be, I, you know, a couple of years ago, the person we know at Microsoft was telling us they were going to Japan all the time, him and his team to meet with Nintendo. Who knows about what? We didn't know. We don't know. Could it be this? Maybe, probably, who, but it just, who knows? it's, it's just, everything is kind of adding up. You know, like when we heard that, even from a reliable source, it was kind of like, ah, like really, I don't. Can we believe? I don't know. That seems yeah. kind of far fetched. But then, more shit like this keeps happening. You're like, okay, maybe that's actually not that far fetched. Maybe there's some master plan here going on. But yeah, um, I don't know. It's just it's just strange to because you would think Nintendo would be focused more just on the software part of things and not you know their hardware. But it seems kind of reverse here. Where yeah, you know, and a lot of people had thought for a while it, with a you know the success of the Wii, but kind of this the success of the Wii was was strange, right? It was it was a super yeah. successful console, but like it was just like I, it was not a console that I ever wanted to own. Like when my family got one, we never sure. played it, right? But like right, I would go to right. your house and want to play it. It's a good console for yeah. your friend to have, and you can go play it. Now it was right. just marred by so much like shovelware and just like shitty games that were like yeah. just designed to do whatever and they didn't have the third party support and then you go over to the Wii U and it's just this huge disaster a lot of people are like well maybe Nintendo's going to turn out to just be a software company because right. the, you know the hardware's not working the Switch has kind of revitalized them in that aspect which is great um, but there's so much more you know I don't think you know Microsoft has a big like when they're competing against Sony and everything like Sony is is Japan you know what I mean like yeah. Microsoft doesn't have a huge market over there because they're they're an American company and mm -hmm. the infrastructure in Japan is so much greater than ours you know like when it comes to the yeah. internet capabilities and they're always 10 mm -hmm. years ahead when it comes to technology with like they had 4k TVs when we were just getting you know 1080 like it was like crazy yeah. Yeah. and and maybe you know it's just their you know it's a win-win it's a yeah. win-win for both of them Microsoft can use Nintendo in those markets just as much as my, as yep. Nintendo can use yep. Microsoft with their online really stuff. So um, a very very good point. It's definitely you have to think the, mo the, the mobility on. of the you have to think the mobility of the Switch is just incredibly intriguing to Microsoft because they're trying to go with this whole play our games anywhere on your mobile device type thing. Well, yeah. you know that's that's the Switch's bread and butter is to take that shit on the go and play in handheld mode and. I don't know, man. You have to think that 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 is very a, a very intriguing thing for Microsoft, and kind and of falls be in line with what they're doing. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting what to they're see wanting to do as the Switch grows in age. These developers kind of start to you know get better at it and especially when it comes yeah. to ports like with a gate like Mortal Kombat 11 is going to be on PC, Xbox One, PS4 and Switch. I'm really interested mm -hmm. to see mm -hmm. how it runs on Switch because early Switch those games that were ported over were not great. Like they didn't run yeah. great. Yeah. And as they start to figure out the technology a little more and figure out how to how to mm -hmm. go about it, it'll be interesting to see if the Switch does become a machine that's like it's not going to be as powerful as an Xbox or a PlayStation. We mm -hmm. get it. But if it can still run those games smoothly um yeah. you know and then that would be a huge thing of you know are we gonna see you know xbox yeah. games on switch and stuff again this is way future talking this is we got our crystal ball out trying to trying to read the signs and read the stars and it's fun to speculate um Definitely fun yeah, to speculate, is, and it's is... definitely something we have to keep our eyes on. You know, with this is kind of oh. I feel like we have a bunch of dominoes lined up, and when Xbox Live comes in a Nintendo Switch, that's going to be the first domino to fall that will uh -huh. hopefully start a chain reaction that will be huge for gamers. So, yeah, we're, we're definitely going to have to Very wait and see what is in store for us. Yeah, uh, yeah so it's hell of a news story we'll right see. there. That's we'll just see. so interesting, man. I can't wait to see what happens. Yeah. Uh, also looking in the future, we're talking next gen future. Uh, mm -hmm. We talked a little bit about the PS5 when it was announced or not announced, but kind of talked about like, oh, they're they're working on it. Well, uh, looks like there's been a patent that has been found that Sony has filed for the PlayStation 5, which looks mm -hmm. to make that PlayStation 5 fully backwards compatible. Jesus. That's Man. oh my god, huge. Huge, oh huge. Oh my god! Especially if that we've is kind of seen. We've kind oh of seen. Lord, 
Yeah. We've kind of we've kind of seen the flip flop, right? Where we've seen PS2 beat Xbox, Xbox 360 beat PS3, and then PS4 beat Xbox One. Kind of flip flop, right? And if they're mm-hmm. looking for ways to keep that from happening again, this is a this huge m- idea, massive, massive. Um, the patents, Absolutely the, pat- the patents suggest that for all the way down to PS1, so PS1, PS2, <sighs> PS3, PS4, Jesus, completely backwards imagine? compatible, reading discs. Uh, yeah, I can because can all you? consoles should be like this. It's so weird to me that consoles aren't that, especially when they're disc based, when the technology isn't changing very much. Like, right. why can I not put a PS3 disc in my PS4? It's both it's, b- Blu ray discs. It's, it's like the same kind of thing. Absolutely maddening. It's I know. insane. Um, that's what, you know, Xbox was like, ooh, we should really do this. And it's it's been continuing to grow. And it's weird how mm-hmm. it's a technology that they've could, like, they've added in. Post launch, after like it's, the fact, I know so, it's like so what? that makes me believe that anybody could just do it. Like I feel like Sony could just patch their consoles and have it run. You know, just add an emulator to it because that's how the PS3 the, worked. You, I, you, yeah. you, you you would run PS1 games via emulator. It'd read the disc and it would do an emulator. You know, so I feel like they could just add that whenever. But this seems like uh, this patent suggests that it's going to be you know. Backwards compatible, and not necessarily mm-hmm. just through emulation, but like you, it looks to be pretty. People are pretty excited about it. Um, what what an idea! This is this is yeah. Huge. Like I don't, yeah, I don't. I personally don't really understand the technical side of this no, very well when it comes to confusing. like things like this. But the act of quote unquote tricking the older generation games as if it's playing on the original device sounds very interesting to me, but also kind of. Uh, maybe a little difficult to achieve. I'm not. I'm not sure. It. It just. It, it's. It's weird. It. It sounds like a theory right now, and I hope to hell that it's true because, god damn man, this would make the price tag on this next gen console so much easier to swallow if I know that I can play such an amazing library of of all these games, dude. Like, oh my god. Yeah, and it, like, I think it'd be huge to see if it is backwards geez. compatible. Um, with discs is great, but. A lot of our games are digital. Hopefully, you know, since if we use the same, you know, login and everything, all of our digital games still exist in our library on the right. PS5. All that is very that important. Would be, that would be um, great, too. And it, it's going to make the difference between being, an for me, being an early adopter and saying, like, oh, this game, this counts is out. Let me let me go ahead and get it versus, yeah, ah, let me just yeah. wait and see, you know. Um yeah, it's it's a big no. deal, and we've been talking about it for a while. If PS Five wants to compete just with the way that Xbox is 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 yeah. is kind of launching into this game streaming, and the the way that mm-hmm. they're kind of trying to move forward in the industry, and how the industry is starting to change. Right. right. As we look towards the future, we can't forget about the past. We love our retro stuff. That's why That's people what were I'm, so dude. psyched about a PlayStation Classic, and then, even though it failed. This, like when they announced it, dude, people were psyched. You know, and it's, This could be a total, I'm sorry for fucking up the PS Classic. This could, this could really, I don't know. This would smooth over a lot of anger at how shitty the PS Classic was. Right, because it, the way it worked is if you had the game, if you have the PS1 game, you're better off playing it on your old PlayStation 1 than you are on the Absolutely. PS Classic. It just yeah, no it, it, the games didn't run well, it didn't whatever. So if they could find a way, you know, that's one thing though is is the emulation on the PS Classic was boof. They need to yeah. figure it out. But the the, mm-hmm. the the reason people were upset is because the PlayStation 1 emulation on the PS3 was fantastic. So people are like, "Well, you did it on your PS3 well, why yeah. is it mm-hmm. shitty on your PS Classic?" Sure. So they right, they right. know what they're doing. They've done it before. Um I don't I just I don't know. The, again, I'm like you. I don't know the technological side of this very well. Exactly. I just yeah. can't imagine it being that difficult, especially no, with the, the, can't. the recent can't. stuff. I can understand yeah. maybe it's tougher for a PS1 or PS2 when it's they're not HD games or whatever. But when it comes to PS3, sure. PS4, once like the discs yeah. are essentially no the question. same, they're on Blu-ray discs. Like, how difficult yeah. could it be to actually it read the be. disc? Isn't it know? the reader this fucking same? I mean, come on. What I mean. Damn, I, yeah. And I'm I sure know, people man. could tell us why it is difficult and, and why, you know, because there's different processors and all this stuff. I get it. I understand it's different technology, that technology grows and everything. I just, I don't mm-hmm. understand. It, it, you think they've mastered their previous generation enough where right. they can make it happen. Um, all I'm saying is this is a definitely something that needs to happen from Sony. Sony needs to do this. Um, yes. To, yes. This, you know. Yeah. 
to compete. People, I people think. have been pe- people have been pretty have been asking for this for quite a long time from them. Um, and like you said, we love our classic library. And this, I mean, just the thought of having one Sony console that I can play any PlayStation game on is just Huge. a dream come true. And and I feel like yeah. there's a, there's a financial I, side of it too that maybe you know this is this is kind of like devil's advocate and like really stretching the idea thin, but. Perhaps, you know, we get a lot of HD remasters. We get a lot of, um, you yeah. know, like this, like Spyro remaster, Crash remaster. We get HD collections like Devil May Cry, and they're not really remastered that well. But it's kind of throwing these games together where, you know, they can say, well, we'd rather do that than have people play their old games. But I don't think that financially makes a big enough dent know. that makes a difference to I, keep them yeah. from doing from keeping them from doing backwards compatibility like because people would still get those if you made them um, because like if you don't have those discs not everyone mm-hmm. has their own not everyone is Dane Rankin who has all their old shit I wish I was I regret ever selling any of my old stuff now that I've yeah. grown up and become a little bit of a collector and you know hardcore gamer I'm more of a gamer now than I ever was but you know, not everybody's like you where they have their own shit. So, I mean, it's like... But, it, you know, Sony seems like they're kind of moving in this whole digital space, you know, and being strictly digital. So maybe it's more along those lines. Yeah. Um, it's more of a it's more of a digital um, backwards compatibility. It's hard It's hard to say, but... So, like, um, games, all their games will be available on the PS4, but that's they've already, they already do that. That's not, that's no different than what they do. True. You can buy PS2 True. games on the PlayStation Store that run on the PS4, you know what I mean? This looks like yeah. it's going to be, you put a disc in, it runs it runs a program and says, oh, is this PS5? No, it's not. And this is something else. You Let know, me run I, it. it'd be interesting, like, what their market analysis says and shit, but, like, I, I have, like, three cousins who are, you know, in their late 30s, early 40s, who, you know, around our, you know, they were balls into the ps1 back in the day like that was that was the console of their generation and i guarantee it they would get back into gaming or buying the next console if they could go back and play all those classic games on on a new console i i i maybe it wouldn't really generate more sales having backwards compatibility but you'd have to think just the option for people to do that it would it's such a big draw i mean Damn, dude! Like I went to some great lengths and some expensive lengths to boost my PS One library and buy an old PlayStation One to play those games and shit. And I mean, I would much rather be able to do it on one my one console that I'm playing my new shit on too. Absolutely. Like, oh, so we'll man, see. I, hopefully, I hopefully so hopefully hope this there's, is fucking true, man. Hopefully, the story holds true. true. Yeah, and I I think it will be. I think I if I had to. Man, I don't know, but I would if I had to gun to my head, I had to choose. I'd say yes, they're gonna they're gonna do this. I think they're smart enough to know. Yeah, I I think uh, it's time they have um, to, right? Because I think that was the biggest. Because they did it in the PS3, and then they didn't do it in the PS4, and people are like whoa 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 whoa. So I think you know they they know they they hear the people you know and and hopefully mm-hmm. hopefully it'll it'll come through. This is something that's very exciting, yeah. and um, there's a lot of because there's a lot of games that like don't exist anywhere now in ps2 games ex- or whatever that, that that you can't play any other way you know what i mean besides having the disc and um and a lot of obscure games to, and stuff be, like that they need to be proud of their old their 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 old libraries with ps2 and ps1 like they are, they are great fucking classic games and they need to tout that shit and let us play them on their new console that is just it's the way it is I, it's the way it's got to be huge Huge selling point, dude. Absolutely huge selling point. Especially at the way like that... If I, if I was on the fence at all, that could be a deciding factor. Yeah. For sure. That's the thing. You know, for me, like, I don't have an Xbox like, One. I didn't have a PS3. I had an Xbox 360, and I have a PS4. Um, we mm-hmm. eventually got a PS3. My brother did, eventually, just to play MLB The Show, for the most part, yeah. and, and whatever. Yeah. But, like, I, you know, I've pretty much just been one console per generation, not counting Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Um mm-hmm. So it's going to be kind of the same thing, you know, I feel like. And Microsoft is is playing this whole game streaming. Like, that idea I really love if it's executed right with just paying monthly and yeah. being able to have all these games at your fingertips. Sony's got to do something. They got to do something to, to reel me in. And this is yeah, something how that you, I, would be hard How would you feel missing out up. on all those Sony IPs that you've, you're so committed to now? How would, how would that, 
you know. Man, I know it's tough, dude. It's tough. You like, wouldn't be able to play your fucking Spider Man. You wouldn't be able I to play know, God dude, of War. I know, dude. But it's the same you, way. Like I never thought I'd want. I, I I'd skip Halo. I, mean, I never thought I'd skip Gears of War, and I had to. And I've done it. You know what I mean? So I don't yeah, know, but man. It's we tough. were also on like the fifth and sixth installment of those games. You know, I know. Like, it's tough. It's tough. And honestly, like. I, I kind of imagine uh-huh. myself in the next generation. I'll probably have both. I'm getting to a point in my adult life where, you know, yeah. I can I can you know spend uh, spend four hundred dollars on something for like a long term investment. You know what I mean? Like it's not just like yeah. four hundred dollars to a ticket to a ball game and then it's like over. Yeah, it's four hundred dollars yeah. that I'll use for f- six years. You know what I mean? So yeah, for sure, know. for sure. Um, well, yeah, well, so man. I'll probably get both, but you know. I don't know which one will I play more. You know, that's the that's another thing because you have yeah, both and, and, and you never play your Xbox, do you? No, no, yeah. no, I don't touch it. But here's the thing: is like if we're seeing, like, there's gonna be new IPs for Microsoft that we're not gonna know what they really are. We're gonna be fucking taking some risks. Battle you know? Toads, dude. <laughs> fucking Battle. <laughs> I want to play Battle Toads, bro. It's great, but man, that, that the SNES game was too fucking hard. Like I like yeah. it, but it's just too hard. Yeah too hard yeah all those games are too hard uh but yeah so again it's another (laughs) something to keep our finger on the pulse of you know again years and years down the road this is a future episode we're 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 looking into the crystal ball but definitely something to pay attention to because if this is this is real next generation's really heating up really yeah really heating up shit is getting hot hot see totsy um now we've talked about two of the big three companies. Well, we kind of talked about Nintendo a little bit in the first one, but let's. But this, this is, is like just Nintendo. Just Nintendo. We might as well round out the big three with a new story about Nintendo, because uh, Nintendo is apparently they're going to be focusing on expanding their IP. Like let that be mm-hmm. a focus of their business. And what does this mean? Yeah. Uh, it means. A few different things. Obviously, the video game market, and and that is always going to be their number one. Right. That's what they've been that's what they're going to be and hopefully what this means for for the games is we'll continue to see these these ips that we love continue mm-hmm. to 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 be show up more often right we're waiting we see, talked that, about metroid prime 4 what did you what did you say be, there you said you said show up more often let's remember that <laughs> let's remember that little statement as we go through this story because that's yeah. something i definitely touch on in my what i have to say here. okay because like we look at like Metro Prime Four, right? Just push back. It's yeah. probably probably going to be another three years before we see that game, and we haven't yep. seen a Metro Prime in what ten years, something like that. The Wii was the yeah. last one. Whenever, and there was whenever a, the one Echoes came out, yeah. Um, you know, it's like boom, few and far between. Usually there's or corruption. You know, sorry, corruption. <laughs> corruption. Yeah, two thousand seven. 2007 12 years yeah so we're on kingdom hearts 3 Ooh. territory there and you know add another <laughs> three years that's 15 Christ. that's you know that's almost a lifetime um you know we usually see you know one zelda per console generation one major yeah. mario title per console generation mm-hmm. um and we got those so early in the switch you know what i mean like so are we, early are we not gonna just, get like another zelda i know until a new I know. console like are we not gonna get a mario odyssey 2 or whatever the next you know but here's game the thing is? is i don't want i don't want the mario odyssey type game and the zelda game to be like the only two like real big adventure ips that we have to look forward to each switch generation i don't want that like i love those games dearly but i don't want those to be the only two big ones you know i worry about that right and that's and, and that's the thing worry is, about that is you know they you know are we going to get a new donkey kong country you know we got a port are we going to get a new one are we going to get a new mario kart we got a port uh we did get a new smash which was you know which is great. Yep, and, that's, yep. and, and uh, you know, we're getting an Animal Crossing. We're getting Luigi's Mansion. Um, we are getting Metroid Prime eventually. Um, so it seems like, you know, they are kind of starting to dive into this. We're getting Pokemon. You know what I mean? So it's like this is definitely something that you can tell they are focusing on. What I just hope it means is, you know, technically, you know, the GameCube had Wind Waker, but then it also had Twilight Princess, but that was also a Wii game. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And mm-hmm. then... And then, but they also had Skyward Sword on the Wii. Skyward you know? Sword, yeah. So, so yeah. technically, there's been like one at the beginning of the cycle, one at the very end of the console cycle. That's usually right. on the other console, you know. Um, Dude, you forgot about Link's Crossbow training. Oh yeah, how could I? How, how could, could I? How could you forget about that? How could I forget? Um, <laughs> but they have all these beloved IPs, right? That yeah. um, you know, they have so much available to work with, and and. 
Mm-hmm. The idea that they're they're like doubling down on focusing on these makes me happy. But also, what it means is 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 more than just the video game side. As we start to see them branch out into um, other content, mobile games, they've yeah. they've kind of started to dabble in. Which, sure, go for it. Like Super Mario Run was fun. I didn't pay for it. I just played the free version, and it was like I got a few hours it, of fun out of it. I, and it yeah. was just like I, I know I get it, and I I understand it. But you and I were not. We're not pretty high on mobile gaming. We're, it's the, that's not really our our scene. Yeah. You know, we you and I are traditional controller in hand, on the couch, yeah, in your game room type of gamers. And I, I just worry a little bit that they're going to be putting in resources and time into mobile gaming, which I get it from a business standpoint. I understand it, but I don't like it. I don't like it. But but I don't like it, Tony. I don't like it. I know, but here's the thing. As they start to explore these other revenue streams, so, you know, mm-hmm. we have we have a Mario Kart mobile game coming out, which I'm actually kind of excited for because, like, at the office at work, we're already talking about, you know, we're going to be battling at lunch, you know what I mean, playing some Mario Kart, if if that's allowed. Just bring in your Switch and do it on that, though. No one else has a Switch, dog, like, because, you know what I mean? Like, you got to have a Switch for that. So you only, every, nah, everyone has yeah. a cell phone. Everyone has a cell phone. You know what I mean? Uh, so uh, yeah. So yeah, it's not I it's just... not about me playing Mario Kart Mobile. It's not about me. It's about the others, man. Of course, if everyone had a Switch, fuck yeah, I'd be all about that. But people don't. But this is still a way to kind of, you know, and especially if it's free or if it's like five bucks. You know what I mean? And just it's like her, just. Just prop up your Switch, give everyone a Joy-Con, and you're you're good to go. They don't oh have to. Oh my have a God, what a disaster that would be! But hey, I did st- it. I did it in an airport with four with three other people. It worked. I know it was tough, you know. but it worked. You've seen us on Let's Peak, baby dicking it, and I hate it. Uh, I know, but. Also, other revenue streams like video content. We have the Mario movie coming out in 2022. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's been rumors of, you know, Netflix shows like Zelda and all these different things that they could have their hands in. Um, mm-hmm. That I think th- those kind of things being successful, Detective Pikachu, those different things being successful opens the door, more revenue, obviously, but opens the door for them to not split their resources, but just have more have more. resources so they're not gonna yeah. it's not gonna be compromising their switch development you know what i mean um yeah and then you know with their their new japan store that just opened or is opening right which is a big deal uh, nintendo world in japan we have one in new york um yep and another big thing is the amusement parks that are opening at universal that's a huge mm-hmm. thing that's, that's a huge big, thing that, that's big boy stuff right that's, there yeah, look that's, at look that's, at that's, Disney, and we're not in any way, I'm not in any way trying to compare Super Nintendo World to Disneyland or Disney World. No way. But, but, when Disney really took off, Disney Mm -hmm. that we know today did not exist until these amusement parks happened. Disney World, Disneyland. Right. And and It it, it brought it to life. And now, Disney owns fucking everything, right? So, Mm -hmm. Universal Studios... Definitely second fiddle to to Disney parks, but sure, sure. Harry Potter started bringing in more people to Universal. Super yeah. Nintendo World will definitely bring more people to Universal. I love oh, Harry Potter, no and I still haven't gone since it's opened Same. in Hollywood like two years, right? And I love Same. Harry Potter, but it's not something that's like, oh, I have to do this. I'll do it when I do it. Super Nintendo Super World. Super Nintendo World. You bet your ass I'm there I opening will, yeah. weekend. You know oh, what I mean? No, no question. No question. So, opening in Tokyo to uh, by the Olympics in 2020 that are in Tokyo. They, they're having it open mm-hmm. by then. Nice little tie-in. It's going to come to Hollywood and Orlando shortly after that. So we still have mm-hmm. a ways before it happens. They started construction on it uh, in Hollywood, I think. I think I saw it last time I was... Uh, I saw Dragon Ball Super Broly at uh, at Universal, and I think as there was construction, they're working on it. But this, all these different revenue streams and different things, I think just helps Nintendo when it comes to what we want to see in their gaming division. Yeah. It's going to just right, bring right. us more of what we want. So, as I, much as as much as I you don't so. want as much as you don't care about more uh I almost said Mortal Kombat. As much as you don't care about Mario Kart Mobile, as much as, you know, we might not necessarily care about uh a movie, you know, is mm-hmm. it going to be good or not? I think this all just opens the door to help Nintendo kind of be get back to that powerhouse that it was, which would entail uh, well, and then help, you know, grow the gaming side that we love. Um, mm. What I mean, what do you think about all this? I know you, this is so 
it's it's it's, it's so, so up for grabs. <sighs> like, what does the, what do they yeah. mean? Expand expanding IP. What does that mean? Does that are they strictly talking about the mobile games? Are they talking about the movies and video content? Are they talking about yeah. the theme parks? Like, what does this mean to you? Um, it's hard not to kind of segment it into these three different sections. Um, like in these pillars that we're talking about here. Yeah. Um, but I think for games, I, I, I hope it means that they understand the value that, that the fans have for their IPs and how much their fans love them. And so I hope it means that they understand that they need to bring those core Nintendo games more frequently to their, to their fans. Um, cause for some reason, and I, this could just be me but I don't know why they feel so few and far between to me. Um, it feels like we go so long a period of times with these, with these IPs that we have to wait for them to come and they, yeah. they don't happen as often that I think that they, that they should. Um, so this, this makes me excited, I think, because maybe it's just because of how I want to interpret it, but it's how I'm going to choose to interpret it. Cause I hope that is the case. Um, it's why I have a Switch, dude, and it's why I love Nintendo because their IPs are so memorable. Their That's characters are the so big thing, right there. Like we, we like, don't, we didn't buy a Switch because it's portable. We didn't buy no. a Switch for none of that. We bought a Switch because we love right. Nintendo and their IPs. Right. And yeah, dude, and that's exactly right. And I and I want to see. Don't get me wrong, Mario Kart is great. Smash is great. Those are all so great, but maybe get a little more creative or reimagine some things like give us another give us a wario world type of game or let's get back to you know paper mario and some and some just some stuff like that that is still an ip but something that's not just like a like a mario party type of type of game and um i i hope it means that they understand that that's what people really love about nintendo and that they're giving more of a commitment to that yeah um and man i <laughs> I, I hope that's what they are meeting here. I really, really do. Right. And I think um, I think you, you kind of hit the nail on the head there. Like, because there have been, like, a lot of Paper Mario titles lately, which is mm-hmm. one of the best. And they've kind of been hit or miss with people. And, and it's tough because yeah. they've kind of been splitting their time between their home consoles and their 3DS. And, I, and they're going right. to hopefully start to slowly get away from the 3DS and focus more on the Switch. Now, I think what's important is... When they talk about expanding IPs, what I hope it means is expanding their specific IPs and expanding and giving us more of that as opposed to, you know, like, of course, we want to see more of that. Like, we got a, you know, like the Super Mario Party was a great example of an IP sure. coming back to form. Um, right. Now, but I just long for the days like this. Dane, how many Super Mario Brothers games are there on NES? Three. Four, four, technically. Four counting. Um, um, lost levels, technically, because that came yeah, out in Japan yeah. or whatever. You know. And then how many Donkey Kong Country games are there on Super Nintendo? Three. Three. Like, we're used to seeing these, you know, a lot of games per series on a console. That's how it was. And that's like, you know, like Donkey Kong Country 1, fantastic. Donkey Kong Country 2, even better in my opinion. Donkey Kong Country 3 is uh, hated on, but still a great game. It just came out late in in the cycle. And then with Nintendo 64... Rarely did we see sequels. We saw two Zelda games because they pretty much just used the same engine and they created right. Majora's Mask in like six months or something, which is which is insane. Um, but I just hope we get back to that. Like, yeah, that's sure. Yeah, I, mean, I, I that's what I hope this means by expanding IPs, yeah. like focusing more of their time on their IP. Just because we got Super Mario Odyssey give us another one. You know what I mean? Like it can take five years. I'm not going to say we need it the next year, but like, sure. Get on it. Get on it. You know? Um, and this is just, just being babies and just like crying about it. And I I understand that, but I don't want to wait until the next Nintendo console in eight years to get another Odyssey game. I love that so much. Breath of the wild was so amazing. It won game of the year. They should be working on another Zelda. I know. They might be. Yeah. We don't know. We don't know what's up with Nintendo these days, and I'm hoping they are and stuff like that. But um, it's just really interesting yeah, I, to see. I would I would not be upset at all if that's what their focus is of expanding IPs means to them either. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be mad about that either. I, I wouldn't. I I would be absolutely thrilled with that too. But I want both. <laughs> I want both. It's tough, yeah, right. Because it's like, oh, we and I, seen- and I I I just feel like we wait so long, dude. I feel like I we have to wait such a long time. I don't I know f- what it... 
And I, I feel know, like man. that's just that's just gaming in general these days. Like the days are yeah. gone where you know, like yeah. they don't pump out game like Assassin's Creed. They pump out a game every year. It seems like almost the last mm-hmm. few years, it's been every two years. But yeah. that goes to yeah. show it only took two years to make Assassin's Creed Odyssey. And how great is that game? You know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, and it's it's like such a double edged sword because I'm also like, yo, take your time. Like especially in Metroid Prime Four, I'm like, oh, you're gonna restart. It's gonna take three years. That's cool as long mm-hmm. as you make it awesome. You know what I mean? So it's like it's sure. this tough, sure. you know, kind of battle. I just I hate to see the 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 twelve year gaps. The yeah, you know, exactly like. like it's 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 so tough because we want it. Mm-hmm. Red Dead Redemption mm-hmm. Two took so long to make. If we ever get a Red Dead Redemption Three, don't expect that for another ten years. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. such a tough pill to swallow. Um, and I just feel like with the Nintendo, they don't reinvent the wheel with their stuff. Yeah. Like right. yes, Mario Odyssey had a lot of new mechanics, the, the hat mm-hmm. throwing stuff, but at the end of the day, how much how different was it of a game of than Galaxy? You know what I mean? Like it's different, yes, but it's not like a complete reboot, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it's like mm-hmm. they're still taking the things that worked well in that game, the things that worked well in Super Mario 64, adding a new mechanic and then just, you know, boom. It's not like they're starting from scratch. Same with no. like, you know, and again, we're not game designers. We don't make games. I I we can be really hard on these people and it can, you know, we understand that. But man, it's just it's tough to it's tough to like this whole year thinking of the Nintendo games that are coming out like and I'm not super psyched on on the Switch in 2019. Luigi's Mansion yeah, 3, I'm I excited know, for, I but I never got to. I didn't play two because it was on 3DS. You know that shit yeah, is annoying. I. I, I don't um, think it, it. I don't think people liked it terribly much either. I, I don't yeah. know. Um, I don't. it's just tough, man. Like I, I love the Switch. I love Nintendo. I just need them to just be given. I feel like Xbox and and Sony more just they're constantly giving mm-hmm. you these heavy hitters last year was just yeah. like yeah. we were bombarded by all these you know good yeah. games and and they have all these yeah. big big games in the wings that we know we're looking forward to nintendo's always kind of just like we got this you got this like things that you're just like all right you got yoshi all right i don't know animal yeah. crossing yeah. people love animal crossing but i'm just like all right okay yeah um, i know you know like I want to be surprised. I want to be like, boom, holy shit, this is happening and have stuff to look yeah. forward to. And that's just not Nintendo's way. Hopefully, maybe this means they're going to change that. But what do I you guys know. what do you what do you guys think? Let us know. Again, this is totally yeah, this could be interpreted all speculation. Ways, so, I want you guys to let us know. I'm curious what other people interpret this as too. But there is something that we do want to talk about. We we started to talk about it. Yeah. Um we got we got so deep in, in this conversation, I almost forgot about the segment, which we can't forget about it because it's so important. No, but no, uh, really not. Super Nintendo World is opening soon in Tokyo mm-hmm. and soon Hollywood and Orlando. And I already said I'm going to be there opening weekend, baby, because it's important to me. I'm excited oh, for the possibilities. Yeah, so let's talk about those possibilities on this week's That Would Be Peak. That Would Be Peak. If they would listen to me, here's some peak ideas about things not so peak. That would be peak. Dane Train. Nintendo Mm -hmm. theme park. Something we've dreamed about for years, since we were kids. Imagining what a Disneyland of Nintendo would be. They're giving it to us. This is the hardest that would be peak we've ever done because... This is, in itself, peak, right? Yes. Like how, but, how do you make this more peak than what it is, dude? But here's the thing, Dane. I don't want you to get your expectations up too high because we're talking universal here, right? This is not going to be a True. big, robust... Well, maybe. Um, my prediction. It's not going to be this big, robust... Like, it's it's like a part of a theme park. It's a part yeah, 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 of yeah. a theme park. It's not its own giant thing. So, yeah, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Expectations are hard to, to tamper a little bit just because we do love it so yeah. much. And, and I don't know. Yeah. I've, I've seen the, the mock-up of the, the Tokyo one, and it looks pretty massive, right? And it looks like there's going to yeah. be a good amount of things. But like Disneyland, you think, well, Disneyland, there's hundreds of rides. Universal, right. there's like five or six, right? That's just the kind of the difference. You know, you spend a weekend at Disneyland. You spend yeah. – 
half a day at Universal. That's just kind of how it works. Right. Sure. So all that being said, all that uh. off the table, expectations through the roof, because that's what this mm. segment's all about. Dane, tell me, what would be peak at oh, Super man. Nintendo World? I think I think what makes a theme park really special and really memorable is when the integration of both rides, decoration, and kind of, you know, shops and restaurants and food all go go really well together. Yeah. And so I I think just what would be peak for me is to really give me that feeling that I am in the Mushroom Kingdom. And I think some some theme parks or some areas that do that really well or um, like the Toy Story area of California Adventure, I think does a fantastic job of that. Toontown. Um, yeah. You, yeah. Feel, think, think, you think, feel like you're in a cartoon, yeah. Right, exactly. And I think that's that's the biggest thing for me is to really, you know, take me out of the fact that I'm that I know I'm in a theme park and make me feel like I'm actually in the Mushroom Kingdom. And sure. um I think that would be just the biggest thing for me, both in, you know, through the restaurants that are there, the shops, the rides. Um, you know, bring those characters to life through the attractions. Um, let us kind of experience some of some of the key places in the Mushroom Kingdom that we love, like Bowser's Castle. Um, think just things like that. You know, really make you feel like that you are there, that you are in the Mushroom Kingdom. Um, yeah. I think some other things that would be really cool is kind of in, is incentives to bring your Switch or your console there. That's and a get good some, idea. Some like some like exclusive, like some actual real worthwhile content like nothing that's like just shitty but like something that's actually really really worthwhile like you are like fuck i need to bring my console to this to this theme park to get this awesome addition to x game you know whatever the case may be um but i don't know man i think in the foods too it'd be really cool to kind of make them all nintendo themed Mm -hmm. um with 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 the foods that would be a that'd be a ton of fun um but man, it's it's so hard to imagine what this will actually look like and what it'll be like. Like, are they gonna have a Star Tours type ride where it's Star Fox and you have Slippy and Peppy and Falco like talking to you on screen at this 3D type of theater ride? Like, I, I don't know. There's there's yeah. so many possibilities they could do. Is yeah. it just Mario? Like, what 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 is it here? So, I I would like to see them incorporate other Nintendo franchises into Super. Nintendo world that'd be really cool but it sounds like it might just be Mario I don't know I don't think so I think it's gonna be Nintendo I think if you look at the mock-up in Tokyo I think there's like a Donkey Kong area there's a Pokemon area blah 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 now here's my answer where money is no object Mm -hmm. wildest dreams are coming true because that's what this segment's all about this is that would be peak not that would really happen this is that would be peak (laughs) and for me Restaurants, great. You know, like I don't eat yeah, much I mean, at, at those things because they're overpriced and everything. No. So whatever they want to do, give me a, a Donkey Kong banana split. Awesome. I don't care. Here's what would be peak and is what would make this park the best park Dude, in fucking existence. Fucking real life Mario Party. Like we actually get to play Mario Party. <laughs> that would be dope. <laughs> that would be peak. But you're on the right track. I want the attractions, the rides themselves to be. Be straight out of the games. Don't just make it a Mario themed ride. Make it Bowser's airship. Make it like soaring over California, but it's like yeah, an airship yeah, level, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Give of me. I I feel like that's a given, though, right? It has to be. That's why it doesn't I, have to be, dude. It doesn't have to be. It could just be a roller coaster where you're just going through the Mushroom Kingdom, and it's just oh, it's Mario. Great. No, I want specifics. I want a Donkey Kong Country minecart level. Yeah, ride. yeah. I want Mario Kart. I want to be. Well, but I am. I amend my answer because I took that as a given. So maybe it's that's not, my bad because I thought that's I that's what it's going, like. A, I want a Pokemon ride that is kind of like Buzz Lightyear at uh, Disney, where you know you got a gun or whatever you're shooting, but instead of like a gun, maybe yeah. it's like Pokemon Go, where it's like there's Pokemon around you as you go through the ride. And yeah. You're trying to catch Pokemon, and you get a stat sheet at the end of all the Pokemon you <laughs> caught. Like. <laughs> That's what I want. I want a zero. I want a fast fucking ride, right? I yeah, want, yeah, yeah. You know, I want Metroid. I want to be it's self destruct mode, Dude. and we've got to get the fuck out of there before it ex- it explodes. A like Metroid ride Metroid. would be. You can make it kind of scary, a little edgy too. That'd yeah, be, not for yeah, the kitties. Dude. Not for the kitties. No, I no. want Super Smash Bros. Something, whether it's 
a VR experience How, or yeah, if it's yeah. something where, you know, I want rides that are tied in specifically to games. Don't just give me absolutely. Mar- don't just give me Mario's, you know, stroll through Mushroom Kingdom. I don't want that. Mm. I want that to be what the park is as a whole. When I go to Mario, right. when I go to when I go to the Mushroom Kingdom section and I see Peach's Castle, that's what I want. I want to feel like I'm there. The ride specifically, yeah, exactly, dude. I want it to yeah. be minecart from Donkey Kong Country. I want it to okay. be, you know, Mario Kart where you know. People hit you with a shell and your cart spins out as part of the ride. You know what I mean? Um, Holy shit, that'd be, how do you do that? Because here's the thing. Do? There's different ways you can do it. The <laughs> Simpsons ride at Universal, it's a complete, like, you're stationary, right? You're in a car, but it's like, it's like yeah. you're, looking, you're looking at a screen and it feels like you're moving. Kind of like soaring over California. Oh, so it's that okay. kind of thing. Um, they have a Transformers ride where it's like, you know, you're trying to escape and, like, the car spins and all kinds of shit. There's there's ways you can do it. It's Technology is insane these days. Um, mm-hmm. I would love i did the thing the void where i did the and i'm actually doing it again this weekend i can't wait where it's complete vr but everything's mapped out to the room so you actually get to walk around and 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 stuff while you're in the vr which is crazy give me something like that of metroid yeah how sweet yeah, would yeah, that yeah. be you know that would that's, be that's what i want i'm focused dude. completely on the attractions um yeah absolutely you, you know that's what it's all about dude that's, that's what it's, what it's all, all about. about and i just don't want them to skimp out and it should be kitty and whatever like i want dope things that are specific to the games not just not yeah, just the characters yeah. not just yoshi's you know uh stroll down a stream right i want it to be <laughs> yeah you're just yeah you're just on his back walking yeah. that would be a good ride right if you're on a yoshi how sweet well, would that be um, so that's that's that what comes cool. that, that's what it comes down to for me is is these attractions. I want them to be legit. Like if I don't get Donkey yeah, Kong dude. Country's minecart, that's the perfect ride. You're in a minecart. Oh, cart. it is. It is. How awesome is I, that? Yeah, yeah, dude. I, um, we gotta go. We gotta make sure we we go. Oh yeah, the that's opening one in Hollywood. For is it in sure. Hollywood or is it in Florida? It's gonna be in Florida? both. It's gonna be both. Both. Yeah, so that's perfect. I'm already here. I'm already here in Hollywood, so this is perfect. Um, so what do you guys think? What are you guys looking forward to at, at Nintendo oh, World? Because this is something, again, I remember talking about this when I was like 10. Like, I'd want to do you know, yeah, Don- Donkey Kong. I want to do Super Mario World. Like, just the games called Super Mario World. is like, that's perfect for a theme park. Call it Super Mario we're gonna World. Be in our, we're going to be in our 30s, and I'm still just as excited. Hell yeah, dude. I can't wait. Um, <laughs> yeah. So so let us know what you guys think. What do you guys, what would be peak to you? What are you looking forward to? What's going to make you, if you have to travel? Oh, I don't have to God, travel. I'm lucky. Man. But what would what would make that your vacation? You know, let us know. Um, now, oh, before dude. we get out of here, <laughs> and before we go into the game releases for this week, there's a future game that's releasing, and there was a demo, mm. and and our demo correspondent, he mm, did it yes. for Resident Evil 2, and he's back again reviewing yes. another demo. I Change give my you, hat direction because the demo expert's here. I give you Dane Dane's the demo, demo Lishin reviews. expert. <laughs> Dane, you played Tony. An- you played Anthem, the demo. Yeah, dude. Played and the this, whole thing. And this Everything is everything you could do. And this is it. this is something that we've been on the fence about. Like, is this going to be the game that we all get to play together? You played the demo, yep. so yep. I give you the floor. I have nothing to say. Please okay. review this anthem demo. So before I go into my review, I played this game with two other people, with JB and one of our best friends, Asher. So mind you, I was playing with friends throughout this whole entire demo. All right. So I've separated out what I have to say into a pros and a cons list. You ready? Yep. Pros. Flying. Flying is really good. It feels good. Um, it just looks great. It It's natural and it really fits the environment that they've built here. And it, the level design, it fits very, very well. Pro number two, friends. Playing with friends is a lot of fun. It's hilarious to see your friends flying around and getting shot in the air and falling out of the sky. Playing with friends is great. Customization is fucking fantastic. You can customize every single part of your javelin. You can create your custom colors. You can create the the look of your armor. You can make it cloth. You can make it steel. You can make it plastic. The customization is absolutely stellar. Some of the best I've ever had in in, in a RPG-ish game like this. Pro number four, visuals and environment top notch it looks 
absolutely stunning, especially in 4K. It looks great. Very, very well done. Pro number five, sounds and music and effects. Um, it sounds incredible. The weapons, the power-ups, the enemies, the music. It is it is very, very well done. Um <laughs> It just, it just nails the kind of space exploration type of sound effects you would exactly expect in this game. Very Mass Effect, um, similar to Mass Effect, uh, but it's, it's excellent. And then my last pro is the differences in the javelins. They're all vastly different. They all play very, very different, and they fit your playing style. So if you want to go shoddy up, you can be the Colossus and just be right in the fucking middle of the fray. Um, yeah, if you want to be, if you want to stand back and snipe, you can be the, uh, not the interceptor. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but whatever the case is, you can kind of fit your style with, with through the javelins. All right. My cons list. Number one, flying. It's also a con because the <laughs> controls are fucking tough and they don't tell you how to fucking do it. Okay. You, they don't tell you, they don't tell you, they don't tell you how to hover. They don't tell you how to hit the ground. Uh-huh. They don't tell you anything. Sure. Con number two, overheating, which is another part of flying. You're flying around, you feel like you're Iron Man, you overheat immediately. You have to go into water, touch the ground, and then fly back up in the air. It's super clunky, and it sucks, and it kind of takes you out of the experience of flying. Um, Another part is, the level design, while it's really great, it's very vertical. And you can't fucking fly up because you overheat all the time. So everything that they've built in this huge vertical environment kind of feels like a waste because some of this shit you can't even get to because you overheat before you can fucking get there it sucks and it's really really frustrating and it all just kind of feels like it's for show it's like what's the point of building that if i can't if you're just going to tease me and overheat my javelin before i can get there right it's so it's so frustrating dude sure um (laughs) <laughs> my next con is the progression because there's really not much progression. They don't track your XP while you're in the missions. You get your XP at the end of a mission. Mm. Um, the XP is kind of, it's not even based off of the amount of enemies you kill or how you kill them. It's just based off completing the activity that you set out to do. It's really weird. It doesn't make it feel like it's an RPG. Um, from what I could remember, you're not getting any bo- like any bonuses to your stats or anything like that when you level up. Okay. Um, it's all about just being able to equip higher level equipment. Um, and so it was kind of, it's kind of a con to me that how you progress and become stronger with your javelins, it's all about equipment. That's all it is. It's all about your equipment and the components that you can equip. And that leads me to my next con, which is the menus. The menus suck ass. (laughs) They're awful. (laughs) They are complete ass, dude. (laughs) <laughs> the menus, okay. the menus suck. I I don't know what more I can say other than they are not good. Um, the gunplay, honestly, I wasn't the biggest fan of. Really, it it was a little clunky and it was not nearly as smooth and crisp as Destiny. Um, I found myself a lot of the time like not knowing where I was and trying to fly away and then just falling into a pit. Um. <laughs> It felt kind of slow to aim around at enemies, even with the sensitivity turned up. Okay. So I wasn't super impressed with the gunplay. Mm. Um, content, again, it was just a demo, but it kind of had that Destiny feel where you're going to run through this shit really, really quickly. It felt like it's, it, the content might be a little light. But again, okay. I'll, I'll say that with an anecdote because it's just a demo. Uh, the overworld fucking sucked you can go one speed in the overworld and it's slow you walk slow as shit it is infuri- dude dude it's oh my god it is fucking infuriating absolutely infuriating yeah um next thing that is a con how you equip your components and it it doesn't quite make sense because certain components change like your r1 and your l1 and your r1 and l1 combined which are like your abilities that you have in combat and so when you equip one of these components it changes what those things are and it doesn't tell you what is mapping to what button so you're like all right like this shield sounds fucking cool but who knows what button it's gonna go to (laughs) or wow like these heat seeking rockets sound really effective but i guess it'll be a surprise when i go into the world (laughs) what the fuck button it's going to be. So that kind of was <laughs> shitty. That was a little shitty because it was just, you didn't, you had no way of knowing. Um, my next con, it feels like Destiny. That's, it, 
and it wraps into my next two cons. I would not call this an RPG, really. Um, you can call it an RPG light, I guess. Okay. Um, and then to wrap it all up, it just doesn't feel like anything new or different or groundbreaking. Like, mm. maybe four or five years ago it certainly would. Sure. Um, but it doesn't feel like it's... Ooh. it's. Yeah, so it's like... I, I would maybe go like a 6.5 out of 10, and even playing with friends, it's still not quite a buy for me. Okay. Yeah. So, so that, that was my, that was my next question. So to, yeah, no, so instead I mean, of, instead it, of, instead of a rating of the demo itself, just last, last, last thing, what mm-hmm. percentage are you likely to buy this game? Uh, 40%. Ooh. Okay. All right. Only because, only because Jordan JB is like on my ass about it. Okay. Wanted me to buy it. Yeah. So, and again, I, I, it just, I, I'm only buying it if you guys buy it. That's the thing. It's like, yeah, we got to gotta go all in on this together or I'm not doing it. I, I mean, and it's it's weird, dude. I've never been so like lukewarm about a game. And here's you know? the thing. Hopefully, like, it's it, it, the, for me, probably I, this is not going to be a, a launch buy for me. But no, the, but maybe a year down the road after it's all that's, been. That's the thing. Like, Dane, if, if me and you go on this together and say, we're not going to buy this launch because we know JB's going to or whatever. And, if, and like, I just don't want if you three buy it and I don't mm-hmm. and I get it six months later and I'm six months behind. There's no point. So, yeah, I we either need to all get it yeah. at, the, at the beginning or wait until it's 30 bucks and then buy it. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, I think it's going to be. A, yeah, it's going to be a wait, I think, dude. Okay, because good. I Having something like that. Resident Evil 2 to play instead is much more of a draw to me than, than right. you know, playing this. And just, I didn't... There it is. Fair even enough. Like in, even, even in the Destiny betas, I felt like I was doing shit that was worthwhile, even as, as slim as Destiny was. In this, I never felt like, oh, I need to go kill these enemies because it's going to help me get stronger and level up. I didn't sure. feel that, like, RPG incentive in this game, so... Yeah, All right. I don't know, man. There it is. Dane's demo reviews anthem. Yeah, forty percent chance of hot. chance of buy. So yeah, yep. there you go. Now here's some games that you can go ahead and buy this week if you want. I don't think you're gonna mm. want to. You might. I don't mm. know. There's one on here mm. that I'm like is 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 a fun is a fun series, but we'll see. Uh, first game, Blaze Blue Central Fiction Special Edition on Switch. February 8th, uh, fighting game. People love Blaze Blue. I don't know what this specific nice, one is. Definitely. But, but definitely nice. Uh, next game, <laughs> God Eater 3 on PC and PS4, also coming out February 8th. Um, mm-hmm. I haven't mm-hmm. heard of God Eater 1 or 2, so. It's a band. It's a Bandai Namco game, Okay. I think. Okay, cool. Right on. Oh, I have okay. heard of God Eater. Yeah, I have. Okay, all right. All right, all right. nice, dude. Uh, here's another one. Uh, Monster Energy Supercross, the official video game to uh, the PC, video game. PS4, Xbox One, and Switch, also February 8th. Um, Sounds like a game my dad, would, my dad would enjoy. Yeah. Hutch Tub would love that one. Uh, oh, yeah. He definitely would love this game. All right, everybody. Hold on to your pants because it's time for Stunt Kite Party Ooh. on the Switch, February 8th. If you want to, you know, get your kites, kites out. Oh, fly a kite. Interesting. And then lastly, the for this upcoming fuck? week, this game, I love Trials. Trials Rising, the next Trials game. Trials is so much fun. Um, you'll see uh, the previous Trials, Trials Fusion, on an upcoming episode of The Challenge. Uh, that mm. that was uh, JB and Big Juicy. You'll stay tuned for that. But yeah, Trials Rising. That was a good one. Uh, Trials Rising PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Switch, February 12th. So get out there, line up overnight at Walmart to get your Stunt Kite Party Dude, February 8th. See you in line for God Eater 3, man. <laughs> now, before we get out of here and close out this fantastic Crystal Ball episode, it's time for Dude, everybody's favorite. I had a blast, favorite. man. This is fun. Yeah, and it's not over. The fun's still still here. Uh, and for everyone's I don't know. I don't know if I consider this fun. segment. This hey, next, this next part here. It's everyone's favorite segment. It's time for the Screen Peakers. <laughs> Top of the peak. Most unpeak pick of the week. Ooh, Screen Peakers. Top of the peak. Most unpeak pick of the week. Ooh, 
there's a phenomenon going on right now. And ah, dude, it's Fuck funny. Internet. I think it's funny. All right. I'm not against it's, this one as much as I was like Bowsette. Like that one was like, I was like, oh, that was annoying. The the people doing cosplay of it was cool. And I was like, all right, that's cool. But this one is has been more entertaining to me. Everyone I, is obsessed with Shaggy right now and the power oh, of nice. Shaggy. The first one I saw was uh, my buddy Jess, before he went and saw Broly, he sent me a video of like Shaggy fighting Goku and it was hilarious. Um, it was it was it was hysterical and it's gone really really far and it's come into the gaming world. There's actually a petition out there to have Shaggy in Mortal Kombat 11, which would be very easy because Warner Brothers already owns Scooby Doo. So there you go. Who knows? Exactly. That would be a very Ed Boon thing to do, like as a joke. But would Warner Brothers like seeing Shaggy's spine ripped out of his back and his head? Yeah, split no. open shit Pro- like definitely not. So that's not going to happen. Yeah. But here's another possibility that uh, people are hoping for <laughs> in this unpeak pick of the week. That's right, Shaggy. As DLC god character it, for Super Smash how Brothers. Th- how do these things start online? Like, god damn it. I don't know, but look at him. He's got the deep V. <laughs> he's got the deep V cut, the green shirt. Yeah, he's he got does. Yeah, the he horseshoe, does. the horseshoe goatee. Yeah, it's perfect. He's ready to fight people. And um I think it's it's Jesus. funny. I'm a bigger fan of Shaggy the singer, but I digress. People are loving their shaggy memes and we're not going to get too see... far into it because it's just, it is what it is. It's, it is unpeak because it's just like silly, but you yeah. know, definitely not going to be on a top it's five list of our picks yeah. anytime soon, but I yeah. thought it would, sh- we'd share the shaggy memes. They're, they're, they're getting out of hand. Uh, shaggy Did and you smash. See Ed Boon? Please no. Did you see Ed Boon tweet out like the ren like the rendering of yes. shaggy actually in Mortal Kombat 11. Yeah, it's really funny. Ed Boon, he's yeah. he, he's 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 the man. He's great. Um, but man, these Shaggy memes, they're going they're going Dude. hard. Matthew Lillard, who played Shaggy in the live action movies, has been like retweeting him and stuff. So he's being a good sport about it. Um, it's just the most it, random fucking characters, like the Shrek thing for so long. Like what? How, like, how did he start, dude? It's this. It's, it's the internet. It's the internet, dog. It's the internet. The the reason this is the unpeaked pick of the week, though, is because if this was real, I'd be furious. If if <laughs> if he was really in Smash, I would be furious. I know. I know. Um, I know. But yeah, there's no way this is happening. So thank God. That's why I can go in the unpeak uh, files, and we can leave yeah, it at that's that. Let's go in the can, unpeak archives for sure. We can leave it at that. Well, Dane, what Dude, a ride Tony. it's been. We looked into the crystal what a ball. Hell of an episode. We were trying to read the stars. A lot of future talk. Uh, let us know what you guys think in the Discord. You can find the link to join our Discord down in the description below. We'd love to have you there to, to hang and talk with us. So please do. Um, also, if you like this hat that I'm wearing or this t shirt I'm wearing or any of our other stuff, mm. you can check or out my t shirt that I'm wearing. All Ooh. of our awesome merch at the Peak Store. That's peakstore.bigcartel.com. Anything you buy there, you're looking great, and you're helping the peakers out. You're helping us make more content. You're helping, you know, the channel evolve and level up. So we thank you for the support, and you know, we just love you so much. We thank you for watching here at youtubecom peakers. Again, we had Let's Peak Halo Reach yesterday, the finale of Super Mario Party tomorrow, and then next Wednesday the 13th. Watch it, people. Hit that sub button. Tell your friends. That's right. Next Wednesday the 13th, the first episode of Peak and Chill. Dane's mm. hosting Hosted a n- by yours nice truly. little talk show. It's mm. a lot of fun. Very relaxed. You know, definitely going to want to check it out. So thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss anything down the road. If you're listening to us on iTunes, Google Play, wherever, leave a, f- a five star. That really helps us out as well. We really appreciate that. Um, get involved in the conversation with us on Twitter as well. You can tweet us. That's the mm. best way to reach mm. us. You can follow me mm-hmm. at I am Tony Revis on Twitter and Instagram. Dane, your Twitter is... DM ranking 12. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. And uh, that's where you can get involved and in, 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 in talk to us. You know, the, the, Twitters are up, us, the Twitters are above our head the entire episode, so you can see it up there. But, you know, we just like to, to call it out again. Now, Dane. This now, is, Tony. What are you playing? Let us know. I know what you're playing, but let the Dude, people know. I, people, I took the plunge, and I'm playing Kingdom Hearts 3. Yeah, yeah, so that's a Assassin's big one. Assassin's Creed Odyssey has been put in the past. I beat it. I could definitely platinum it, but I 
have put 114 hours into that game. I think it's time to say wow. night night. Yeah. Night night to Alexios. Yeah. Um, and hello to Sora, Donald, and Goofy. All right. So right on. Man, I just so many times while playing Kingdom Hearts 3, I'm just like, wow, this is so ridiculous, but it's also awesome. Yeah, that's that's what Kingdom <laughs> Hearts just, is. That's what Kingdom Hearts yeah, is. Yeah, dude. It's a little antiquated, but it has a special place in my heart. And you know what? It's fun, and all the Disney characters look absolutely superb. Just, that's awesome. They look great. They look yeah. great. Uh, for me, I'm... Tony, what about you, dude? I haven't talked to you a lot about I, your, your gaming. What, I know, because I'm, I'm so busy. I have, you know, I went on a trip last week, and I have a lot of things uh, in the works. I'm just so busy hanging out with Kind of Funny. And, uh, yeah, man, you know, it's the lifestyle of an internet <laughs> celebrity, dude. It's tough. Yeah. Um, dude. Tough. But uh, I'm going to dive in. Uh, I, I played some Smash. Get back into Smash. Um, Dude, I need to get back into Smash, too. Shit. Yeah, get, get into Smash. Um, but I'm going to play Shadow of the Colossus next, I think. Ooh, and then, yes, and, nice. I can't wait to hear what you think about that. And I, I'm, I'm still considering if I'm going to go back and finish Kingdom Hearts 2 and Birth by Sleep and all that stuff. I don't know. I might not. But Shadow of the Colossus, that's going to be the next thing for me. So. Um, Excellent. What are you guys playing? What are you guys doing? Um, we're gonna play Toe Jam and Earl soon on the Twitch channel, Twitch.tv backslash Screen Peakers Live. Whenever that comes out, that, stay tuned for that. Follow us there. We didn't Hell live yeah, stream dude. this Sunday because it was Super Bowl. We we're busy, but we're gonna be on there soon. So make sure go to Twitch.tv backslash Screen Peakers Live, and you'll see us gaming soon. Follow us there. We'll be on there soon, and we'll be back next week with another kick-ass Larry Bird episode. Of Screen Ooh. Peakers, because it's 33. Get it, Larry? Bur Hell Anyways. yeah, dude. We got to keep this going. We got you started it. it That's what we got to do. It must go uh, on. <laughs> <laughs> so make sure you guys catch us next week. That's all I got to say. I got nothing else to say, dude. Nothing. Zero. Psych. I have a very important thing Zilch. to say. The most important rule of all. We love you. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Stop. Motherfucking peeking at my motherfucking screen. We're out of here.